Okay, so welcome to the new partner orientation dementia training. Um, our learning objectives are define Alzheimer's and dementia, introduction to the milestones at Otterbein program, understand person directed care and how to be a liberator, and we're going to review our milestones commitment. So first we're going to do a dementia overview and just talk about the stages of the disease. And this is going to, we're going to start off with this Alzheimer's Association video. of dementia. So according to the Alzheimer's Association, uh, dementia is not a specific disease. It is an overall term that describes a group of symptoms associated with a decline in memory or other thinking skills severe enough to reduce a person's ability to perform everyday activities. So um, dementia, how common is it? So we kind of just, you guys just watched the video. So Alzheimer's disease is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States with no cure um, and no effective treatment. Now there is a couple treatments that just came out. Uh, we're crossing our fingers, but this is more for very early uh, stages uh, of the disease. So. Hopefully, we get some more information about if they get FDA approved for those. One in three seniors die uh, with this uh, some form of dementia, more than breast cancer and uh, prostate cancer combined. That's a huge number. So if you look at our neighborhoods and our campuses, uh, one in three of those folks will probably uh, pass away from this uh, the disease. So this is why it's so important um, that we make sure that we are educating everybody uh, how to take care of our uh, elders and making sure that we have programs that are meaningful uh, to our, our folks. So the Alzheimer's Association facts and figures, more than 5.8 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's. Every 65 seconds, someone in the United States develops a disease. In 2019, Alzheimer's disease and dementia will cost the nation $290 billion. And by 2050, projected 14 million Americans will be living with Alzheimer's. That's going to be a huge percentage of our neighborhoods and campuses. Only 16% of seniors receive regular cognitive checkups, though. And between 2000 and 2017, deaths from heart disease have decreased by 9% while well, deaths from Alzheimer's has increased by 145%. So let's just take a moment and just soak that in. I mean, um, the, the longer you're going to be in healthcare, the more folks that you're going to be taken care of with dementia. So I want, to, uh, I want you guys to all understand what it means uh, to have dementia and what is the difference between dementia and Alzheimer's. So dementia is a broad term to describe many types of cognitive declines, including, and we're going to talk about that in a few minutes, but dementia, a simple term for dementia is memory loss. So if you have memory loss, you can have memory loss for many, many different reasons. And, um, but if you're over 65 years old, if you have memory loss and or dementia, you probably will have Alzheimer's. Okay. 65 and older. 
Now, you can have Alzheimer's younger than 65. The youngest person I've taken care of with Alzheimer's was 35. Um, so younger people can get it. But uh, if you're over 65 uh, and you have some memory issues, it's probably due to Alzheimer's. Um, I listed a few uh, other reasons why you may have memory loss, uh, Alzheimer's, vascular dementia, Parkinson's, Lewy bodies, AIDS, PICS, alcohol related. I could go on and on why you may have some form of memory loss and or dementia. So if you have Alzheimer's, you have dementia. But if you have dementia or memory loss, not necessarily is it Alzheimer's. We basically treat it about the same way though, okay? So let me get real, let's really dig deep in here. So this is a PET scan that a uh, neurologist gave me years ago, and I've used this throughout my career to truly explain to folks uh, what it looks like to have Alzheimer's and what happens to the brains with Alzheimer's. So the first one is a normal adult brain. So hopefully that looks like our brain, okay? Uh, hopefully we hadn't done anything crazy that uh, we wouldn't have a healthy brain like this. So you see all the reds and the yellows. It's very active and it's big, right? Uh, to the far, I think it'd be your right, uh, is a normal infant brain. Do you see how it's smaller? Do you see how it's less red, less... Um, uh, yellow is in it and then in the middle you'll see a late Alzheimer's brain um, so I want you to take a minute and look at all three of those and think who which ones look more of uh, the same most people will say the late Alzheimer's in the normal infant brain look just the same so this is very interesting so if you think of uh, folks with Alzheimer's um, they, they they go backwards. So think of a normal infant. Uh, when when you first bring home an, uh, an infant from the hospital, what can that infant do for themselves? Nothing, right? Um, their total care. Um, what kind? Of, what can they eat? Um, and normally I'll say, um, can they eat steaks? And everybody will say no, and I'll say, why is that? Well, because they have no teeth. And then I'll say, well, I know plenty of people that don't have no teeth and all on a good steak, right? But um, but what it is, is because of the infant brain, they haven't developed the chew, chew, swallow. They haven't developed all of those tasks to be able to eat. So they'll start off with a formula. Um, as that infant gets a little bit older, um, they start eating more preyed, preyed uh, food, right? They still can't use their utensils. You, you, we still have to feed them. Um, they're starting to kind of crawl a little bit, uh, but they're still total care. As the infant brain grows a, a healthier and bigger, um, it's starting to eat, but uh, they still haven't figured out the utensils yet, and a lot of it's finger food. And if you've uh, ever t uh, taken care of a toddler, um, their attention span is like zero, so they'll be eating, but if they see a cartoon on or if their dog's doing something funny, they'll forget what they're doing and they'll, they'll move on. Um, at this point, the, the toddler will start to walk, but when he goes to walk, he's kind of wobbling around. Um, and guess what else they do when they're starting to walk? They fall. They fall a lot, right? So um, uh, the toddlers, they start to try to dress themselves, but they need a lot of verbal cueing. As the child's brain gets a little bit older, um, they're starting to eat, but we're chopping up their food pretty good. They're starting to use those utensils. Uh, they're walking better now. Um, they're starting to dress themselves, but the, their uh, outfits usually don't look the best, or they might want to uh, wear that uh, princess outfit to Walmart um, uh, because they just uh, haven't got the concept of what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. So, and then the brain grows into a normal adult brain. They can feed themselves. They can do everything for themselves and they're independent. So with a late Alzheimer's, or with an Alzheimer's brain, we're going to go backwards, right? So what you might see um, at first 
is that um, maybe uh, they're not dressing so well. This lady that always wore fine makeup and always made sure her outfits were T to a T and she always had makeup on, they start not doing that anymore. Um, as the disease goes on, uh, they are needing more verbal cueing. Hey, remember, you got to take a shower. Um, hey, you got to brush your teeth. They can still do it, uh, but sometimes need some uh, verbal reminders. As the disease moves for, uh, further back uh, into the disease, uh, you'll see that uh, they're having a harder time um, utilizing their silverware. Uh, or maybe there's drinking, but they're kind of spilling it all over. Uh, maybe they would be better with maybe a sippy cup. Um, with their spoons, uh, they can't get that spoon all the way to their mouth. So they might need a spoon uh, that curves uh, to help them with that. As the brain continues to decline, um, you will see that they're starting to pocket their food. They look like little chipmunks because the brain forgot to say how to swallow. So they'll chew and chew and chew all day, but they forget how to swallow. At this point, we know that we need to change their diet maybe to a pre-diet. At this point, they're needing more assist, uh, more hands-on assist. Um, their walking becomes a little bit more wobblier um, and they start to fall quite a bit. And then as the disease goes on, they become more total care. Uh, they're now down to a parade diet, probably thick in liquids at this time. Uh, they're most prob uh, prob probably in a wheelchair at this point. And at the end stage, uh, they're most likely more bed bound. And sometimes you can get them up in a big jerry chair. Uh, a lot of folks at the very end will be in a fetal like position and mostly can do just thick in liquids at this time. So you'll see the progression of the brain, uh, the difference between the late Alzheimer's brain and the normal infant brain. The normal infant brain, it's growing. You can teach it. It's, uh, it understands. It's getting bigger. With the late Alzheimer's brain, uh, they're declining. The brain is dying. And you can see the shrinkage of the brain. So that's kind of the process of Alzheimer's disease. So expressions and behaviors. So when I first started at Otterbein, and I will admit this, um, uh, I worked in a, uh, I, I ran a behavioral Alzheimer's unit, and that's what they called it back in the day, behavioral Alzheimer's unit. And uh, when I came to Otterbein, they said, no, that's an expression. And I remember kind of, yeah, it's a behavior. But once uh, Otterbein explained to me what, what they thought was the difference. It's like, oh my gosh, you guys are right. Um, so please start using expressions other than behaviors. And let's talk about this a little bit. Expression is a form of communication uh, to indicate an unmet need. Partner's job to determine which need must be met to resolve the expressions. Expressions do not occur without a reason. And then a behavior is a clinical term, negative, often viewed as attention seeking or they're doing it on purpose. So moving forward, use the word terms expressions instead of behaviors. So think about that. I, I just showed you a picture of the brain. That brain is dying. They are not doing this uh, on purpose. So it can't be a behavior, right? They're trying to express their needs because they can no longer communicate. Kind of like a child when they're first learning their words, they can't communicate a lot of words. So sometimes we got to use hand signals and different things. So please uh, th uh, remember that this is an expression. These are not behaviors when you're dealing with people with dementia. So physical conditions that may cause negative expressions. So this might trigger some real negative expressions. Uh, and I'm just going to go through just a couple of these. Uh, COPD, uh, seizure disorder, constipation you might see these folks saying oh i'm going to have a baby or i'm pregnant they're con they know there's something going on down there but their brain or the their voice can't tell them express that to to you um maybe it's depression and this is what we see a lot in the people in the beginning stages they think they have dementia and a lot of times it's just depression and you might see this in your therapy areas maybe these folks 
have just been some, through a traumatic um, surgery uh, and they're just depressed and it can look like uh, Alzheimer's and dementia. Sometimes it's just pain and I cannot communicate this with you. So I'm going to be, I want to have some negative expressions. And sometimes you're just hungry. Uh, sometimes they're just used to that snack and we're not giving them their snack every day. Let me tell you what, at eight o'clock, if you don't give me your ice, me ice cream, you're going to see some anger there. So that's why it's so important that we get, truly uh, know our residents. So common reasons for expressions, basic needs, thirsty, hungry. Mind you, a lot of these folks are just scared and we just need to tell them you're in a safe place and everything's going to be okay. The uh, pain, bathroom, um, their constipation, or maybe they're incontinent and uh, they've been sitting there for a while. I'd feel pretty uncomfortable too and I'd probably have an expression if I was incontinent and had to sit in it for a while. Some of it is lack of sleep. Remember, uh, they get their days and nights mixed up. Uh, sometimes these folks don't sleep for a couple days. Uh, just like a child, they get pretty grumpy if they don't get their sleep. Uh, temperature, is it too hot or is it too cold? Um, are we truly adjusting the temperature uh, to our residents and uh, elders? Are we uh, adjusting that temperature to meet our needs? So make sure we're meeting our residents' needs and not our needs. Medication side effects, discomfort, clothing, our positioning. If you know some clothings are getting too uh, tight for a resident, make sure you're communicating with your social worker so we can get a hold of that family to get some different clothing in. Sometimes our, for, our folks are just bored. They're just bored out of their minds. So this is perfect opportunity to use the music of memory, the IN2L, the different programs that we have set, uh, personalized programs we set for those uh, residents. Um, and sometimes it's psychological disorders. So expressions, uh, here's a list of some of the uh, expressions you may see, wandering, hoarding, resistance to care, aggression, agitation, depression, sleep issues, paranoia, and repetition. Repetition is, um, I want to go home. I want to go home. Um, uh, and tells the same story over and over. Remember, when they say this, uh, the same thing over and over, to them, it's like the first time uh, they've ever said it. And we got to answer it like the first time we've ever heard it. So wandering versus exit seeking. Wandering is to walk or move in a leisure, casual, or aimless way. Uh, taking a walk, not trying to leave. Uh, sometimes they're just bored. Uh, not always a negative expression. Sometimes this is a great way for our residents to burn off some energy. Uh, a lot of times it's good for them just to kind of wander around. And you can see on their facial expression um, if they're agitated. And that's when we look more into the exit seeking, uh, looking for something specific um, away from the designated area. They're pounding on the door. They want to go home. They're upset. They're looking for their children. They want to go to work. Um, so we got to make sure that's a whole different issue than wandering. So we got to make sure that we are communicating with our nurse and our therapist to see if they have any ideas to help us. But these are great ways uh, when, uh, uh, things that you can do is offer different things. Uh, look at their about me's. Uh, see what they enjoy to talk about and do. Uh, look at their path to well-beings. Um, is there an activity that they really uh, enjoy doing that we can distract them away from exit seeking? So the three stages of dementia. Uh, so if you Google this, and I'm not big on Googling anything me medical because you never know what you're going to get, um, but... Uh, you might see lots of different things. You might see seven stages of this disease, uh, four stages, uh, seven stages, 12 stages. You might see. But um, here at Otterbein and even the Alzheimer's Association, they like to do three stages, beginning stage, middle stage, and end stage. And these stages can fluctuate if there's an infection involved, certain situations. Um, so... Uh, just go by the three stages that are a lot easier to uh, communicate with families. So memory loss and other symptoms of dementia. Symptoms of dementia can vary, but at least two of the following core mental functions must 
significantly impaired uh, to be considered dementia. So you get your memory, communication and language, ability to focus and pay attention, reasoning and judgment, and visual perception. So just because you have memory, uh, just a little bit of memory loss, because heck, a lot of us do, right? You know, we forget our keys and stuff. But there's there are other things uh, also going on with them. So memory issues, just uh, because someone has memory issues does not mean they have dementia. There are many uh, different causes of memory loss, such as UTIs, sleep disturbances, uh, traumatic experience. Maybe somebody just lost a loved one. Uh, anesthetics. Oh my gosh, you'll see a lot of folks that maybe just got had, had surgery and they're near rehab areas and they are not acting very very right the family's like what in the world's going on um senior citizens it takes a lot longer for those anesthetics to get out of the system uh, sometimes uh almost a month for them to completely get out so they still might or they might have some pain medicines in them um so sometimes we just got to give them a couple of weeks uh for some of that stuff to get out of their systems so causes um damage to the brain it is Alzheimer's disease. Other conditions that may influence dementia, depression, medication side effects, uh, excess use of alcohol. A lot of people don't think of that. And what we're seeing, starting to see now, uh, drugs also. Thyroid problems and vitamin deficiency. Uh, you know, if they're not getting the vitamin uh, 12 or their vitamin D, and you know, we, we can see all kinds of issues with those folks. Uh, there's not one specific test to diagnose this disease. Years ago, somebody would have to actually pass away, and then they'd have to do a biopsy to get a diagnosis. Even though there's not one specific test, uh, we, uh, the specialists, they can diagnose pretty good. I mean, they're pretty like 95% accurate these days using multiple tests uh, to get that diagnosis. It is so important to get early diagnosis so we can get therapies involved and we can really try to keep them at the highest level possible.